This is the B-52 Strata Fortress, also called the Buff, Big Fat, Ugly Fella. The wing structure, interconnected by wing ribs and spars, is made of super strong steel mixed with alloy and magnesium, allowing the plane to carry eight Pratt and Whitney low-bypass engines paired in pods. These engines are necessary to transport 70,000 pounds of weapons both internally within the rotary weapon system and externally on these racks. Here is the cockpit. Inside you will find that it still looks like a plane from the 1970s. Just behind is the weapon system officer and moving downstairs is the navigation section. Opening the nose you will find the active electronically scanned array radar. This helps the crews see further and more accurately, providing increased situational awareness. The fire control radars can detect and track targets at long ranges, up to 50 nautical miles. We will also look at the basic step-by-step -step process of starting all the eight engines and how to operate the targeting pod while opening the bomb bay door, all in the video ahead so don't miss a beat. This plane will be flying till the year 2050. Let's take a look inside the frame structure and understand how it gained its rigidity and strength. The wing structure is divided into several parts. Running along the entire length of the wing are the front and rear spars made from super strong steel combined with alloy and magnesium to reduce rust. These spars are then interconnected by wing rib constructions capable of withstanding substantial stress and providing flexibility during tight turns. You can also find hollow structures located all over the wings. These are intentionally made to store around 7,000 gallons of fuel. A quick note. Because its wings are so long and flexible, the wings and tail would touch the ground if the nose were raised too much. This is the reason they do not rotate like this regular aircraft while taking off but require a long runway to create lift and flies almost horizontally. Moving back to the frame, this wing structure is directly connected to these bulkheads and horizontal formers all over the plane which are made of high-grade steel and magnesium alloys. This is the longer rons that goes along the entire length of the aircraft. Here you can find hundreds of panels that are riveted to these frames to give it a lightweight, versatile, aerodynamic structure. The B-52 has four bicycle landing gears located both at the front and rear of the aircraft. You can also find two wingtip outrigger wheels to prevent the wings from crashing. Since they are among the largest landing gears, the left side folds forward while the right side folds backward. The reason they fold in opposite directions is to make room for both of them inside the plane. Interestingly, the landing gear can crab walk, meaning it moves sideways. This feature proves beneficial due to the unusually large wingtips. However, its primary purpose of having the crab walk is to counter the crosswind effect during landings in windy conditions. As we are still near the landing gear, let's open this ventral entry hatch. As you can see, there are small steps allowing the crew to enter the plane from here. You'll find this small passage which is being sandwiched by these two huge engine control modules and communication compartments, which are computerized systems that manage and control an engine's performance. Moving forward is the offense or navigation compartment. On the left side, we have the radar navigator, who also serves as the bombardier, utilizing the radar to target and direct weapons. And the guy on the right was also the navigator, although their role was on a larger scale guiding the aircraft for the entire mission. Interestingly, this plane features an ejection seat. Unlike conventional upward ejection seats, this one ejects downwards to a certain height until the pilot is safe. Moving up to the second level, towards the back of the aircraft, we find two additional seats forming the defense station. On the left is the electronic warfare officer responsible for controlling all defensive equipment, including the previously mentioned ECM. Speaking of bomber aircraft, here is the famous B-29 bomber just for you, available in War Thunder. War Thunder has more than 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 major nations. Join a worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic battles. Dive into the intense combat of War Thunder, where ultra-precise vehicles, lifelike graphics, and authentic sound effects come together to craft an immersive experience. You can discover your style with an in-depth customization system that offers hundreds of camouflage and more. We adore the impressive X-ray view of damage, which precisely illustrates what occurs when a vehicle is destroyed. Join the battle now for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox by clicking the link in the description. 
New players and those who haven't played in at least six months receive a substantial bonus pack on all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, and an exclusive 3D decorator for your vehicle. Play War Thunder today. This role is pivotal as the aircraft lacks substantial defensive equipment to evade enemy missiles or fighters. Additionally, the aircraft is equipped with upward-firing ejection seats as depicted in the animation. Finally, let's explore the flight deck. The co-pilot's seat is on the right, while the captain's seat is on the left. Proceeding forward, we encounter eight throttle levers. Notably, engines four and five protrude slightly further, as most pilots prefer using these inboard engines for minor throttle adjustments. Alternatively, the levers positioned behind can also be utilized to turn all the eight engines in full throttle. There is also a glass windows above these aid pilots during air-to-air -air refueling. Like the defense compartment, the pilot and co-pilot also have ejection seats. These panels blow off, allowing the ejection seats to safely jettison away from the aircraft. Before we delve into flying, let's explore the engine. The Super Fortress boasts approximately eight engines. This is how it is arranged, from engine number one to engine number eight in this order. These engines are arranged in pairs within pods and are suspended by four pylons positioned beneath and forward of the wing's leading edge. Let's delve into how a low bypass engine functions. The fan rotor draws in ambient air, which undergoes powerful compression in both the low pressure and high pressure compressors. Subsequently, the air enters the combustor where fuel injection occurs. This process generates a continuous combustion of fuel and air, reaching temperatures of about 1,000 degrees Celsius. The resultant heat causes the gas to expand, leading it to escape from the combustor with high energy, flowing through both the high and low pressure turbines. As a consequence, the turbine blades rotate. The energy liberated by this process drives both the compressor and the fan, thus producing thrust. Before we delve into how to start the plane, let's familiarize ourselves with the basic controls. This is the control wheel needed to steer the plane. Below are the rudder or brake pedals, and these are the throttles. This section comprises the dials for the eight engines. Above them is the engine fire shutoff switch. Moving down, you'll find the engine pressure ratio gauges. Just below is the tachometer and the exhaust gas temperature gauge. Finally, this is the fuel flow meter. Now these two large TV screens are the EVS monitors that display footage. If you look from outside the plane, there are two bulbs underneath the aircraft's nose. In poor conditions, the low light television scanners are used to steer the plane to its destination or target. Let's do a simple start up of the engine. Step one, switch to pneumatic start. Then turn on the starter for engine number four located here. Step two, once the RPM reaches 15%, you can advance the throttle for engine number four. Step three, following the same sequence, you can start engine number five by waiting for a few minutes. However, starting all eight engines is a time consuming process. We can switch to step number four in case of an emergency. You can initiate startup using shotgun shells, which are placed here just below the engine. Hot gas is rapidly pumped through the starter which swiftly spins up all eight engines at once. Step number five. Once the engine are on, you can push for full throttle, and that's a simplified process on starting a B-52 plane. This is the steering yoke for the co-pilot, and it has a few controls. First, you have the EVS electronic video system that controls these monitors located here. The red button is an engine stall prevention system usually activated during takeoff at slow speed. If you look closely at the back, you have a communication switch, pressing down for the ground control and command center. To talk to the crew members, you can press this button up. Finally, we have this stab trim stabilizer or the lateral trim stabilizer, probably for this tail elevators moving up or down. We all know that almost all planes have ailerons on their wings, but the B-52 is one of the few planes that do not require ailerons, at least in the latest versions. Instead, it uses spoilers and flaps to turn the plane. These spoilers opens up at a desired angle and opposite each other, as shown in the animation. While the flaps extends outwards as shown here. 
This action increases the surface area of the wings on both sides of the plane. During takeoff, all flaps are extended to their maximum capacity, creating extra lift to help the eight engines launch the aircraft off the ground. When landing, the spoilers act as brakes, helping the plane decrease speed while the flaps creates a cushion of air for a softer landing. But this giant beast will not stop easily. It requires a drag parachute to come to a halt. This is how it works. When a drag chute is deployed upon landing, two parachutes are used. A smaller pilot chute is used to pull the bigger main chute out of its container. And this is quite big. It's around 13.3 meter in diameters and around 27 meter long that weighs around 200 pounds, which translates to around 90 kilograms. Speaking of size, the B-52 Stratofortress is 40 feet, 8 inches high. It's also 159 feet, 4 inches long and has a wingspan of 185 feet. Let's make a general comparison to other aircraft. Here is the AC-130 gunship animated in our recent video. As you can see, it's much smaller. Moving forward, we have the Galaxy Cargo Transport Plane, which stands tall in height and even has a wider body. And finally, a worthy comparison is the Soviet Tu-95 bomber, also animated in one of our videos. This is also a strategic bomber aircraft built at a cost of around $26 million, while the D-52 costs around $94 million considering all the tech upgrades added to it. As the name suggests, this external rack can carry around nine conventional weapons, while the upgraded rack can carry around six Payway laser-guided bombs on one side of the wing. These guided bombs have a maximum range of over 30 kilometers, depending on their drop altitude. This means the higher the altitude, the larger the distance it will travel towards its intended target. While the main purpose of this rack is to carry around 12 AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missiles, this low-detection, standoff, air-launch cruise missile has a range of around 370 kilometers, which translates to about 230 miles. This capability means that, for example, a bomber equipped with this system can target any Russian military installation near the border, offering a lower-cost alternative to other cruise missiles. But that's not all. It even has an internal bomb bay door. When loading, it can open all the way in this angle. It is done to provide more room for loading or unloading the various weapon system. However, when dropping or operating the bombs, it opens only halfway. This is probably done to maintain the aerodynamics of the plane when flying at high altitude. Here, you will find that the new rotary weapons bay allows for a wider variety of munitions to be carried. It can be fitted with eight nuclear-capable air-launch cruise missiles, also known as ALCM. If you consider the external weapon bay, it can carry up to 20 ALCMs on both sides of the wings. This missile was specially developed to increase the effectiveness and survivability of the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress strategic bomber. Here's how it works. It usually drops the first missile, and when it is safely away from the plane, it can slowly open its wings and the tail sections to glide to its target with a jet engine. The new rotary weapon bay can turn 360 degrees and drop the second cruise missile, then the third and fourth. These clever tactics of rotary weapons system help in carrying more missiles than the older B-52 planes. Not to forget, it can also carry up to 27 conventional bombs in its internal weapons bay. These can be Mark 82 dumb weapon, which can be dropped in succession on a large scale without any guidance system. Let's take a look at how the weapon system officer operates in a simple process. Remember the laser-guided bombs we talked about earlier? This is the targeting pod that helps aims moving targets. Inside the weapon system officer section, he can laser designate the target with his controller located here. This joystick helps turn the targeting pod and guide the laser-equipped weapons. When ready, he can flip the switch on the button if the laser-guided bomb is located internally. This opens the bomb bay door. Once released, the bomb can be guided to any mobile target, like this moving tank, and aiming through this laser targeting pod located on the wings, obliterating it completely from thousands of feet away, thus turning the plane into a flying super fortress. But a question arises since these weapons are very heavy. When you drop and one side of the wing's weapon pylon is empty, it can tilt the plane to this angle. To fix this, the pilot can take fuel in any configuration and move it throughout the jet. So you can start pumping gas from any of the auxiliary tanks, the main tanks, or the outboard and external tanks to maintain the plane's center of gravity. 
This is also helpful if the plane has taken battle damage or if an engine is lost. Join the battle now for free by clicking the link in the description. Gain access to a large bonus pack featuring multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, and more. Support the channel and start playing War Thunder today.